Hi, this is Shane Morton with IndieExpress.com, and I'm here with PJ Raval and Jay Hodges, the co-directors and producers of the documentary film Trinidad. So, what inspired, who came up with the idea to make the movie? Was it a joint d decision, or did somebody bring the idea to someone else? Well, we were at a dinner party, actually, and someone mentioned the town of Trinidad, and we kind of couldn't believe it, so we actually researched it a little bit. Turned out it was true. We um, contacted Marcy Bowers, who's the surgeon performing the surgeries there, and she was like, you should come down to Trinidad. We can talk more in person about it. And then we went, and it kind of became our first research trip. So. <laughs> and you're supposed to speak now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we went out and met Marcy, and we met a lot of people in the town, and we found out that it was a little bit different than what we had expected it to be. We thought it was this town full of transsexual women and you know, cowboys and everything. Um, the cowboys were there, but there was a very small transgender population. And we met uh, Marcy Bowers, and she encouraged us to come back and introduce us to some women who were forming a bed and breakfast for transgender women there, who are two of the other women in the film, Sabrina and Laura. So you guys didn't actually know that um, uh, Morning Glow was going to to it wasn't it wasn't really a part of the the initial concept. It kind of just happened. What a gr what great timing, right? Exactly. Right. I mean, that's part of documentary filmmaking is you just start following a subject, you know, following a story, and you just see where it kind of ends up. And so, I mean, originally we just wanted to really look at the town and kind of focus on Marcy, but then when Morning Glow started happening, we were like, wow, this is really incredible, because this is kind of what's going on now, present day, you know, so. Yeah, originally our, our main focus was the town itself. Like, we wanted to do a portrait of the town, but then we met all these incredible people, and then just kind of fleshed out the story a lot, so. It was really... Some of the images uh, with the children actually in the school uh, and, and what they said, it was so like kind of mind altering for me, um, especially the, the what's a man, what's a woman. And the one girl who said, you know, I think we should, you just got to let people be who they are. I was like, you know, that that's a very adult way of kind of liberal way of looking at things in this town that really didn't seem like it was that liberal. It, did you find... Um, it, but it seemed like there was a nice kind of 50-50 split in the town about kind of live and let live. Did, did, did you really find that kind of overall about Trinidad, that it was a pretty open place? Yeah, I think we did. And, um, I mean, it's really interesting. And a lot of people ask us, like, why there? And, and you know, honestly, it's kind of hard to say. It's, uh, you know, they're an accepting town. And it's hard to say whether or not they became accepting because of what was happening in the town versus them being an accepting town. And that's why something like this can start to happen. I think it's a mutual thing, but I think they very much as uh, a community are very much into live and let live. And I think it's not only just for the transgender, you know, practice that's going on there. I think it's kind of overall, that's their attitude of everyone live and let live. So. And also the doctor who originally started the operations, Dr. Biber, was greatly respected in the community. And he did, actually the surgeries kept the hospital open during the 70s. So he was not only respected as a person, but he also brought this economic, you know, they've, the surgeries brought all this money to the town, and so they probably, that probably has something to do with it also, you know. Is this your first time collaborating together on a film? Yes. yes. How, can you kind of talk about the experience of, I guess, how uh, you can, the process of your collaboration in terms of uh, the directing style, kind of what the, the documentary was truly going to be about? Sure, I mean, it's funny because when we say we made this film, like we made this film, like the two of us made this film. I mean, we shot it, we directed it, produced it. I mean, we kind of did everything. And I think with documentary, um, you know, with narrative filmmaking, sometimes there's a lot of um, people that have to be involved. And actually with documentary, it's one of the things where you can really make a much more smaller, intimate crew. So. Small's better to get the reality. Yeah, and you know, and we're friends. And so it was really nice to just actually kind of go out there as friends and just kind of you know, have fun making something, and it turns out to be this feature-length documentary, so. And we did, we both brought, brought certain things, so that PJ has a lot of more experience than I do in filmmaking, and a lot of directing experience, so he's definitely took the lead in that, and I have, I'm, my background's in publishing, so I had a lot of writing experience, which was helpful in the grants, and pulling together a story I does, and so it was very collaborative, and, but we each had our own specialty, kind of, but, yeah. It, you're seeing a lot right now uh, about transgender kind of breaking through the, 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 the stereotype barrier a little bit for the first time ever. I, you know, I know GLAD is really pushing to get transgender out there more and, and 
to really open up dialogue about you know the realities and not the stereotypes of it. I really thought this film uh, really was a very honest uh, you know depiction of these women that are learning to be comfortable with themselves, and it, you know it really was a moving film. This is kind of one of the first documentaries that's really out there. I mean, there's been a few others, but this is kind of the first one about that area and that town and its importance and stuff. Well, one of the things that was important to us was to not sensationalize the women's stories. And I feel like there's been work before that definitely focuses on so the surgical aspects before and after. And, you know, we come from a society that's very obsessed with image and kind of transformation. But I think at the root of it, we're really interested on how everyone has this need to express themselves. And we really wanted to just kind of look at that. Um, and I think the more that we followed these women, the more that they trusted us, you know, and realized what we were really looking at in terms of their everyday lives and, um, and how we really want to educate people that way by just seeing someone's everyday life and, you know, the challenges they face and how they may be similar to the same challenges everyone else faces, you know? That was what I thought was so brilliant, uh, was that it was. I mean, it was just like, it was like watching anyone live their life. And, and I love the fact that it was, uh, pedestrian is not the word I'm looking for, but n n normal. It was very real, very honest. Now, I was just going to elaborate on that a little bit, uh, just on the, um, in the process of making the film and seeing these people, like their strengths really became, like I really began to admire them and like learn from them. And I was, and I think we both learned a lot about ourselves and about the, you know, these people. Yeah, it's, it's really it's, great. Like Sabrina has this quote in our film where she says, you know, uh, she hopes that when people look at her, that they think if she has the guts to be who she is, I should have the guts to be who I am. And that's kind of what we wanted to do with this film. And that was, was so eye-opening to me personally, and I and we both. I'm speaking for PJ also because I know it's true. But we both hope that that is what happens to viewers. You know, we hope they have that same experience with us. And I think that is not a transgender thing. That's just a universal thing. Everybody wants to be who they are. So, yeah, and, and that's just you know, her saying that is such is something that she would say. You know, like, <laughs> like after watching the film, it really. So, there seemed to be a real split in the town a little bit between uh, Marcy and the, uh, the house. Uh, but it seemed like there might be some coming together there in the end a little bit about kind of working together. It, where is that kind of in reality right now, if, if, you, are, if you know? Um, you know, Marcy's still in the town very much. Her, you know, practice is taking off still. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because when we were following them, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure for them to all get along and be best friends because they're going through a similar experience, but realistically, they're individuals just like anyone else. And, you know, it'd, it'd be foolish to say, like, I would get along with every filmmaker in the world. It's just, you know what I mean? Everyone has their differences, so. Is, is Morning Glory still functioning, though, as Morning a house? Glow. Morning Glow, sorry. Um, it's currently not right now. It's not. D uh, question about rights real fast, because I'm a big Pippin fan. Did, did you have issues being able to use that song at all? Because uh, it, it, it was so beautiful. No, they were, they were fine with it. Yeah. Very open to it, yeah. Um, Ozer was actually very excited about uh, she's singing it. Steven Schwartz is great. He's, he's such a giving person. Uh, what, um, what's next? I know this film's playing Outfest here in L.A. in July. Uh, where else is the film going and what's next for the two of you? Um, we're still trying to figure that out. I mean, we're, you know... Um, just trying to, yeah, honestly, we finished this film like maybe two weeks ago. So this is kind of, we're kind of using this as our springboard to start, you know, getting it out there. I mean, hopefully we'll be playing it on the East Coast sometime probably this fall. Definitely back in Austin. Um, hopefully we'll take it internationally maybe within the next like six yeah. months. So. so. Well, I look forward to, uh, to seeing it again at, at uh, Out Out Fest. And uh, thank you to very much for coming in and talking about this, this really remarkable and important film that we have right now. And hopefully uh, the majority of our audience will get a chance to see it sometime soon. So thank you. Thank, thank you. This has been Shane with IndieExpress.com.